Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. Easter. He he is risen. This morning, I had this. Thank you. I I heard me this morning. um, I came from Butler. I come from Butler. And it was snowing up in Butler. And it was the most wonderful view as we drove south on 8 and then turned to west on 228 because um, I'm looking into the, the sun, uh, the, the uh, east, and there, the moon is coming up, and it's snowing, and the moon's coming through the clouds, and it was a beautiful, beautiful view, and it was a full moon, and I was just, and I, I mean, I've, I've had so many sunrise services in my life, but it was that rare moment where everything was just perfect, and so I just slowed down and just enjoyed the view, so Um, And that's something I hope for all of you this morning is that you've had a chance to slow down and enjoy the enjoy the morning. You know, Um, not all of us have to rush around and do seven o'clock and eleven o'clock and not ten o'clock. So uh, so I'll try to find that peaceful place Uh, this this morning. Cindy and I are going to do um, a song together in the middle of the service and it's going to be Lamb of God and uh, Cindy and I have uh, we've worked together for a long time we it's it's rare for us to, to actually play perform together play together so I'm looking forward to it thank you Cindy for being here uh, let's see um I think that I'm not going to load you all up with a bunch of announcements this morning but if there is an announcement to make this morning I, um, this this is your opportunity so do, is there one Well, let's, oh, Lois, welcome back. I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) And I want to thank Pastor Steve, first of all, for keeping in touch with me all the time. And I want to thank all my friends who sent cards, telephone calls, and prayers. That's why I'm here today. And I want to thank you all. My church family and bless you all. Bless you, Lois. Bless you. I, on uh, Monday Thursday, we had a service on Monday Thursday, and I'm standing in the parking lot all, all by myself, and I'm getting myself out of the car, and all of a sudden, this orange car buzzes by me, and I go, "There's Lois." <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I was out of her way. <laughs> no, it's wonderful to have you. Wonderful to have you here. Anytime you can make it. Others this morning. Okay. Well, as as we have here, it, the, this service is exactly what you would have most Sunday mornings. And so we'll have a call to worship and we'll have the uh, uh, opening hymn. Um, we'll have one difference is that it's Presbyterian tradition to have a um, um, confessional prayer, prayer of confession. But during Easter, we drop that. So we drop that and go to, to um, prayers of praise and adoration and then litany of assurance. So that's, the, that's the, what, I, what I want to tell you. That's the only change this morning. Otherwise, it's a, pretty much a typical, typical bulletin. So with that, please rise. Look around. Look around at your neighbors, family, friends, visitors. Look at them all. And then uh, with that, Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We have a call to worship here inspired by Psalm 118. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to God. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship God. Cindy, let it help us with the opening hymn number 367, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
verse 2. As we remain standing, let us turn to our bulletins. Under the prayer of praise and adoration, let us read it aloud in unison. God of salvation, you have rolled the stone away and the tomb is empty. Nothing can defeat your love for mankind. The night is past and with dawn comes new creation. Christ is risen to bring us new life. We herald with gladness your anointing of Jesus and rejoice in your promised redemption from sin. Hear our shouts of glad adoration as we enter the courtyard of your redeeming grace. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ receives forgiveness of sins through this name. They put Jesus to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised Jesus on the third day and made him manifest. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ receives forgiveness of sins through this name. And Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ receives forgiveness of sins through this name. Amen. We give thanks for Lois's return, so that's one part of our prayer. But are there other cares and concerns or joys and thanksgivings that you would like to bring up this day so we can enter that into our prayer? Uh, Carol. My brother's planning having surgery on Tuesday for his time. Um, so I hope that Bob is having surgery on Tuesday on his eye, correct? Others? Uh, Nancy. My daughter's mother-in-law uh, fell and broke her femur, and she is in uh, Concordia nursing home to recuperate. Her name is Lois. So, your daughter's mother-in-law fell and broke her femur, and her name is Lois. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. Others? Yes, Jeff. Travel overseas uh, for a trip to see our daughter and his family. Thank you, Jeff. Others? Gail. Continued prayers for Ukraine. Prayers for Ukraine. Others? Yes. 
Lauren. My student is having daily seizures and they're not sure what the cause of it is. Um, he's 12 years old. He can describe it. Um, yeah, he's having What is Tyler suffering with? Um, they believe he's having pseudo seizures oh. daily, but they're not sure. S pseudo seizures or seizures. Tyler, thank you, Lauren. Let us pray. Let us pray. God of new life, we come before you with hearts filled with gratitude and praise. We praise you for your power, even over death. We thank you for the newness of spring that surrounds us, lifting our spirits. And above all, we thank you for the new life in Jesus Christ, which we can experience today and, and every day. We pray for our world and the places where death seems to reign supreme. We pray that your power for life might be seen in big and small ways and that hope might shine through. May the same be true in the hopeless places of our own hearts. Give us hope for new life and new beginnings as indeed we begin again each day with you. Show us how to live as Easter people, as disciples of Jesus Christ, sharing this good news with others. Lord, as we have, have this amazing opportunity to speak to you and to lift up our cares and concerns and our, and, and our thanksgivings, and we, we lift up Bob, who's headed into surgery on, on Tuesday on his eye. We lift up uh, we lift up uh, Lois um, or uh, Nancy's daughter's mother-in-law who broke, who broke her femur. We lift up the people of Ukraine. We lift, we lift up traveling mercies for the Weatherby family as they travel to Wisconsin. And we also lift up Tyler, 12-year-old Tyler, who's having seizures of an unknown source. Lord, there may be other cares concerns, perhaps some joys and thanksgivings. In this moment of silence, I give opportunity for those to lift up their prayers to you. Lord, hear our prayers. And now let us lift up our voices as we pray aloud those words we have been encouraged to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen indeed. Well, since the youngsters aren't here this morning, the little ones, I will uh, move on with the time with our youth. And so we will uh, move into the prayer for illumination. And the purpose of the prayer for illumination is to illuminate the passage. And so we call upon the Holy Spirit to, to um, shine upon the passage, open up the passage, and also prepare both the speaker and the listener for what the church is to hear this day. So with that, let us pray. Oh God, by your Spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our readings this morning come from both from the New Testament this morning, as is the Easter tradition. Uh, the first reading is from Acts, Acts 2, and the second is from the Gospel according to John, towards the end of John, chapter 20. So I'll read Acts first, and then John. Peter's words here in Acts follow the conversion of the first Gentile, Peter not only bears witness to the resurrection, but also proclaims the opening of the gospel message beyond the, the Jewish people. Acts 10, 
Verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and the power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnessing of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him, made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Now we move to the gospel according to John. The climax of this gospel and of our faith is Easter. Jesus' followers, discovering the empty tomb and meeting Jesus, Mary Magdalene plays a key role in John's version of that story that never grows old. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, followed him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside of the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head, one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, Mary said to Jesus, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am sending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. 
My sermon this morning is titled, Assuming the Worst. Assuming the Worst. And the question I have this morning is, do we need to know where they laid him? Do we need to know where they laid him? Mary Magdalene had gone to the tomb in the dark, which is remarkable upon its, unto itself because she is a woman and she's walking the streets at any time of day, but especially at the dark. But... The point I want to the, 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 the point I want to make here is that she never looked in the tomb when she ran off. She never looked in. She didn't know what was going on in there. What ran her off was the fact that the stone had been moved. No telling who had moved the stone. They were not easy to move. No telling who she might be dealing with. But Mary never looked in, but assumed the worst. She assumed the worst. She assumed that Jesus' body had, had been there, but that someone had robbed the tomb and set Jesus' body someplace else for whatever reason. Apparently, Jesus' Jesus's disciples were no better off because they ran to the tomb to see for themselves. And Peter and the other disciple had to look in the tomb, still acting as if the body had been taken, as I say, assuming the worst. They both believed for themselves that Jesus' body was gone and there was no reason to stick around seeking clues. They went home, assuming the worst. Walt Whitman once wrote, be curious, not judgmental. Be curious, not judgmental. That there is a certain... There's certainly a dose of judgment when we assume the worst. We could give the disciples some credit and say they were just curious when they peered into the tomb. But we know better. We know better. When they walked away and went back home with a sentiment of, show's over, nothing to see here. They didn't understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. They assumed the worst, and that, at the most, Jesus had been a wishful rabbi. William Barclay, 20th century, century Scottish theologian, he wrote, If a man fights his way through his doubts to the conviction that Jesus Christ is Lord, he has attained to a certainty that the man unthinkingly accepts things can never reach. So what he's saying is that you have doubts and you struggle with something that if you work through it, work through it, challenge it, turn into it, as my, my brother who's a pastor says, turn into your doubts and really, really work it over. Well, that process, if you get through that process and you come through and your faith is intact and your faith is, your faith is going to be stronger than anyone who just accepted it. Just accepted it. And you can see that in, in the people, the Mary Magdalene and the disciples. That's what had to take place in the following weeks following the, the empty tomb. The disciples had to fight their way through their doubts. It helped that Mary Magdalene had seen the risen Lord, but the disciples still had to work out their own faith. The two angels asked Mary, 
Why are you weeping? Her response, they've taken my, away my Lord, and I, I do not know where they have laid him. What may seem like a rebuke from the angels is a reminder of the heavens' perspective. Heaven is rejoicing while Mary is weeping. Because Jesus died, we can be forgiven. Because he lives, we too shall live. Historians and archaeologists have looked for the remains of Jesus for centuries to no avail. No gain, no benefit. You would search the internet this evening and you'll see some new story about people who have either gone to the tomb, studied the dust, looked around in holes, studied the caves. There are people that just want to find the remains. And I guess if you're convinced that Jesus remains dead, there's, there's got to be a body. But if we believe Jesus lives, we don't care to search out for the body. John Bunyan, 17th century Puritan, said, Faith makes great burdens light. Unbelief makes light burdens intolerably heavy. Once again, faith makes great burdens light. Unbelief makes light burdens intolerably heavy. Perhaps you've resolved your unbelief. Perhaps you've resolved your unbelief in the resurrection. Perhaps you've, you're just trying to get through this life. Perhaps you've hit a wall. What we can learn from today's passage about Mary Magdalene and the disciples coming, in, coming around to believing the resurrection, that we too may be wrestling with our, with our doubt and assuming the worst in a situation. There is reality, but there's also judgment. On one hand, the reality may be that hard times are coming. On the other hand, we may be so judgmental that we can't even imagine anything but the worst outcome. And we stress over it. We're anxious over it. It can drive us crazy. Just remember, faith makes great burdens light. Unbelief makes light burdens intolerably heavy. Figuratively, are you looking for where the body is laid? You know? Has your doubt sent you on rabbit trails? My last words this morning are, rest your minds. Rest your minds, whether you're talking about Jesus I think I'll end on Jesus. Rest your minds. There is no body. There is no body. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather here, on this Easter morning, as we turn to the scripture, as we've prayed together, as we've heard one voice interpret the scripture, Lord, I, I know that you take what I have said and turn it into many voices that meet people where they are. Lord, it's my prayer that if there are those here who are carrying a great burden, may their faith be strong. And for those who have unbelief, Lord, I know you love all of us, no matter what, where we are, no matter what we have done. And if unbelief is an issue, Lord, I pray that you send those words or send those people or send those situations that bring us closer to you. Faith makes great burdens light indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise. Find your hymnals.
Look for hymn number 360. Jesus Christ is risen today. standing for just a moment more. Let us confess our faith as we read aloud in unison the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As the ushers move into position... Let us prepare to return to God our gifts. As the psalmist wrote, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Ushers, please come forward. Please rise.
Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you, not only for the special gift of Easter, but also for the daily gift of life, the sun that rises each day, the moon that dazzles us, the food on the table at breakfast, the smile across the room. We offer to you in return our gifts, both of money and of ourselves. Use us, we pray, to give gifts to others in your name. Amen. Amen. So as we prepare to go out from here, as we pre prepare to, to uh, take on the world out there, uh, the flurries have stopped, the sleep has stopped, and so uh, it looks a little, little more um, typical. Um, one thing I enjoy about Scripture is that the Bible is about God, and it's about how to have a relationship with God. And then everything else falls out from that. But the one thing I have always found is there are situations in the scripture where they, they, they're, they're simply people. And Mary Magdalene and the disciples are just people with doubts. They were standing there. They listened to Jesus for days of days and days and days, months and months and months, years and years, three years. They listened to him. They still didn't understand. They still ran home. Mary Magdalene didn't even look in the tomb when she ran off. We're, we're like that. And we're somewhere on that scale of, of you know, the unattainable perfect faith and to a, you know, just a heart filled with doubt. And it doesn't mean you're lost. It just means you're human. And so therefore, as you go out from here, and if you, you know, as you think about the scripture, you think about the story, and don't get caught up in the comparison. We're on a journey, every one of us. And I'm just a beggar leading another beggar to the bread. So when we go out from here and go back out in that world, it's my hope that you too can continue your journey to find the bread of life. To find the bread of life. Go in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen indeed. Cindy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Help us with this last hymn, closing hymn 583. You are my all in all.